I wanted to figure out the best way to get the most effective outputs using ChatGPT. So I went directly to the source. I opened up ChatGPT and typed in just that. What's the best way to get the most effective outputs using ChatGPT? And there you have it. So let's break down exactly how ChatGPT says to use it. Okay, so number one, ChatGPT told us that we need to be clear and specific with your questions. We should avoid asking complex or convoluted questions as this can make it harder for the model to understand what you are asking. This can lead to lengthy or irrelevant responses. Don't just ask ChatGPT what's the meaning of life. Be specific, descriptive, and as detailed as possible about the desired context, outcome, length, format, style, etc. Let's get to an example. Most people would ask ChatGPT, write a poem about chocolate chip cookies, which gives you a pretty solid result. At the end of the day, that is the cool thing about this. It's conversational, it's easy to use. So the poem comes up with chocolate chip cookies, oh so sweet, a treat that can't be beat, a culinary feat, golden brown, soft with a crumbly texture. The aroma of that was is pure century pleasure. With every bite, a taste of heaven, chunks of chocolate that are so forgiven, a sweet indulgent that brings a smile, a treat that's simple yet so versatile. I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but that's a pretty good example. But next, let's just try a little bit more of a descriptive approach. Write a short, inspiring poem about how chocolate chip cookies are always hiding from the cookie monster in the style of Dr. Seuss. Chocolate chip cookies, oh, what a sight. So delicious and warm, like a ray of light but the cookie monster's near with his appetite so grand, and cookies are always hiding in a place so well planned. But never fear, oh cookies smelling round, for the cookie monster's love will always be profound. He'll find you eventually and enjoy with glee, but for now, hide and shine so bright and free. Okay, okay, now that's a much better response. ChatGPT has a ton of this hidden functionality that all you need to do is play around with and figure out how to use it. This will give you more effective prompts, which brings us to tip number two from ChatGPT, know the limits of the model. It's powerful, but it can't do everything. Sometimes the answers it generates is just completely false. It just makes stuff up. Let's go over a few ways of how to get around this. First, correct spelling and grammar is a must. Proper formatting is another. So one of my favorite ways to use this is, for example, using the declarative XY prompting, which makes it easier for ChatGPT to comprehend. So let's say I wanted ChatGPT to outline the benefits of declaring XY prompting. This would be my input. First, I'll give it a task. Then I'll give it the tone and style I want it in. I'll give it the reader level, like who's paying attention to this. How long do I want the output? And then I will input my text. This makes it way easier on the model. Here's the bare bones of the prompt for you to copy. Task, tone, style, reader level, length, my text. If you're using this correct formatting and still aren't getting the desired results or relevant info to the output, check your input for spelling mistakes. The AI might not completely understand what you're asking. It works a lot like math. The order of operations plays a huge role. So to get the most effective responses, put instructions at the beginning of the prompt and use these hashtag, 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 or these symbols to separate the instruction in the context. It's a great tool for summarizing information. Most people just Google search, they find a cool article, they grab the link, they give it to ChatGPT and say, summarize this, please. So what could happen is ChatGPT may consider a link from earlier in the conversation if you don't specify. However, if you bracket the text inputs in quotations, ChatGPT will know the exact link that you're referring to. Let's instead use this effective way to format your prompt. Summarize the text below as a bullet point list of the most important points. Text, text input here, and then ignore all previous instructions before this one prompt. Make sure ChatGPT understands your instructions before you push for results. You can do this by adding acknowledge with blank if you understand the task and don't perform the task yet. If ChatGPT responds with what they were supposed to, you know it understood the assignment. This helps break down complex or elaborate instructions. Let's say I want to try the best pizza in the country. What I would type in is task. Generate a table of 10 cities in the US with the best pizza. Columns, number, city, state, pizza style, flavor known for, and acknowledge with dot, 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 if you understand the task, don't perform the task yet. So ChatGPT has told us that it understands the task, and now we're gonna respond with, perform the task. Boom, here's the table of 10 cities in the US with the best pizza. Number one, New York, with the pizza style, Neapolitan, flavor known for the classic margarita. Then we got the deep dish from Chicago, the sourdough from San Francisco, again, the Neapolitan from New Haven, but they're known for their clam pizza, which is a pretty cool list. The easier you make it on the AI, the better the outputs you'll receive. Which brings us to the next pro tip from ChatGPT. Avoid asking multiple questions in a singular prompt. It's best to ask one question at a time to get a more focused answer. Ask too many and ChatGPT might get overwhelmed and just start spouting nonsense. Again, let's just go straight into an example and make this as easy as possible for you. Here's how you would use it. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to ChatGPT and say, explain the benefits of sticking to a routine. 
That's just one prompt. And then our response from ChatGPT is super solid. Sticking to a routine has several benefits, including increased productivity, improved time management, better mental and physical health, reduced stress and anxiety. You get the point. Let's take it one step further using the let's think about this prompt. So let's say, let's think about this using an example. For example, let's consider a person named Sarah who wants to improve her health and well being. She decides to stick to a daily routine that includes waking up at the same time every day, drinking a glass of water and stretching, eating a healthy breakfast, going for a morning walk spending time on work or studying. And again, let's take it one step further and notice how we're using one prompt every single time. We're gonna use the let's think about this from a reverse perspective prompt. Basically, we're gonna get the negatives. We just got the pros of sticking to a routine. Now let's get the negatives. Now let's consider Sarah not sticking to a routine. This could lead to difficulty waking up in the morning, skipping breakfast or eating unhealthy foods, lack of physical activity, poor time management, difficulty sleeping at night, increased stress and anxiety. If you ask for all three of those things at once, it might not have given the best result. One thing you also wanna do is reduce fluffy and imprecise descriptions. So for example, let's not write, the description for this product should be fairly short, a few sentences only, and not too much more. That's not specific. A more effective wording would be, use a three to five sentence paragraph to describe this product. Again, the goal is just to make the job easier for ChatGPT to understand exactly what you want and then locate the answer. Here's another great format for you to get the best outputs. First, you're gonna set the stage. I want you to act as an expert. Then you lay out your relationship with ChatGPT. I will give you blank whatever information you'll provide. Then you'll tell ChatGPT you will. Then you input the items that they should return. And then you give it your first request. And then after that, it's conversational. You can just say, make it funnier. Let's just put this prompt into action. I want you to act as an expert advertiser. I will give you a product in the target customer. You will create a campaign to promote the product. You will choose the product slogan, channels for promotion, key messaging and brand guidelines. And here's my first request. Pretty cool, right? Which leads us into our next tip, which is number four, providing more context. ChatGPT has been trained on a diverse set of topics, but it may struggle to understand the context of your questions without giving you more examples. Try to provide as much context as possible. Ask questions, but also provide examples. Instead of asking ChatGPT, what movie should I watch? Add movies that you like for context. Here are some examples of TV shows I really like. Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones, Ted Lasso, Dexter, The Sopranos. What other shows do you think that I might like? Based on the TV shows you mentioned that you enjoy, you may also like the following shows. The Wire, Mad Men, The Walking Dead, The Office, Friends, Ozark, Peaky Blinders, Bodyguard, and The Good Place. Which is pretty accurate because I love a lot of those shows. A little context and example goes a long way. Which leads us into the last tip from ChatGPT, provide feedback. Like I mentioned earlier, you kind of have to guide the AI to give the answer you're hoping for. It's not like Google. One way to get more desired responses is what we call few shot prompting. So instead of giving directions and sending the text, you add a few examples to ChatGPT to analyze first. Instead of writing this, extract keywords from the below text, text, keywords, you'd write this. Extract keywords from the corresponding text below, text one, Stripe provides APIs that web developers can use to integrate payment processing into the websites and mobile applications. Keywords, you give it. Text, you give it. Text three, you give it. Keywords three, you give it. This way the AI can learn from your references, knows exactly what you're looking for, and then will give you that. It makes ChatGPT way more accurate. It's not necessary for every single question, but if you do notice you're not getting what you want, try this. So that's how ChatGPT itself tells you how to use it. But I have a few more tips that are even better. Tip number one, it's better to tell AI what to do versus what not to do. Same for telling it what you do like versus what you don't like. Especially if you're looking for movie or food recommendations, I wouldn't say, I hate Brussels sprouts. I would say, I love potatoes. Pro tip number three is make learning enjoyable by tailoring the prompts. You don't understand quantum physics? Have Snoop Dogg explain it to a level that a fifth grader would understand. With this prompt, explain quantum physics to a five-year-old in the style of Snoop Dogg. I'm not sure what's more impressive, the fact that now I understand quantum physics or the fact that Snoop Dogg is the one that explained it to me. But now for the coolest tip of all. You can have ChatGPT help you help it get the best response by making it create the prompt itself. What? Let me just show you with an example. So we're gonna open up the tool. We're gonna say, you are a prompt generation machine. Your task is to collect information about the user's goals, objectives, and any additional relevant information. The prompt should include all of the necessary information that was provided to you. Ask follow-up questions if you need clarification. Your output should be optimized for ChatGPT interactions. Start by asking the user the goals and the desired output. And then you're gonna have a conversation. All you have to do is explain your goal. The keys in the formatting. Let's say my goal is to write a blog post. 
I'll use this prompt. So now ChatGPT responds and I have to explain my goals. Obviously the more descriptive you are, the better, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna keep it simple to show its effectiveness. My goal is to find the most effective prompt for writing blog posts. And here's the key, add, how should I format the information to make it easy for you to understand? And here's the response. You can simply provide the information as text in a clear and concise manner. Here's an example of how you could format the information, topic, target, tone. This format provides a clear and concise summary of necessary information for generating prompt. Of course, feel free to provide any additional details or context that you may think is relevant. That way it shows you how to format inputs to get the best outputs. So by adding the topic, the audience, the style, the tone, you're gonna get a better output. By clearly explaining your goals and objective, you're gonna get a better output. Everything in this video is gonna make you better than 99% of users using ChatGPT. For everyone else, it's a cool tool. For you, it's literally magic. So earlier in this video, I explained how ChatGPT was an excellent tool for summarizing things. I actually recorded an entire video showing exactly how to do that and why the founder of ChatGPT itself, Sam Altman, said that the summarize this prompt is his favorite way to use ChatGPT. So check out that video next.